OK, you've got the list of players' names and their contact numbers. You've got the jumpers, footballs, magnetic board. Can't coach a woman's football team without a magnetic board. <laughs> First aid kit? Oh, yeah, just on that matter. Um, I'm OK with the training drills and the coaching strategies and the administrative stuff, but I am a bit concerned I don't know enough about sports injuries. I mean, what happens if somebody gets injured during a game or a practice? Oh, no problem. Your assistant, Lisa, is trained in sports first aid. But basically, you need to remember it's AAA. AAA? AAA, all about acronyms. Look after your doctor ABC, then when that's taken care of, it's into your salt apps. Rices for soft tissue injury, no harm of course, and just keep an eye out for DOMS. Oh, I see. OK, uh, do you mind taking me through all those? Easy. Just come inside to the whiteboard. Correct prevention strategies, treatment and rehabilitation are all vital for anyone who sustains an injury while playing sport. This program is about sports injuries. We'll look at strategies for preventing them, causes and types of sports injuries, immediate and further assessment, treatment of soft tissue injuries and injury rehabilitation. Many injuries in sport are preventable and there are a number of precautions that can help athletes avoid them. One of them is a suitable warm-up before playing. So by making sure the team does a proper warm-up, certain injuries can be avoided? Correct. So what should be included in the warm-up? Usually around 10 minutes of light continuous exercise and it should be specific to the sport. Here, listen to this. A fast sporting skill like a tennis or squash or football or one of these sports that involves speed, then I think warm-up is, is critical both for injury prevention and for, and for skill and for performance. I think if the sport is relatively slow, for example like jogging, recreational jogging, uh, that in itself can be a warm-up activity so there probably isn't a great necessity to warm up prior to it. If you are a sprinter, uh, you would never anticipate um, you know, a maximal effort speed activity like that without a substantial warm-up to prepare the muscles for the type of speed of contractions they're going to do. So um, you know, I suppose the worst case scenario is a, is a muscle or tendon rupture uh, because the muscle wasn't sufficiently prepared for the activity. I think the general principles of a warm-up are that you try to uh, mimic um, some of the uh, sporting skills and you try to focus on body parts that are involved in the sport. To play sport at any level requires a good base level of fitness. Training programs should assist athletes to develop both fitness and skills to equip them properly to participate in their chosen sports. A combination of strength and flexibility is important in developing appropriate fitness levels. Insufficient training can lead to injury, as can overtraining. Insufficient um, training is a, is a big issue for uh, people at all different sporting levels. Each sport has very specific requirements in terms of the physical preparation. If there hasn't been sufficient time given for the athlete to prepare, uh, then that can certainly cause issues uh, regards injury. Overtraining is, is common. Um, overtraining is common at all levels of sport. Um, I observe it frequently at the elite level of sport and also with um, uh, you know, recreational sports people as well. It, some of it comes from ignorance and on their behalf and a lack of guidance perhaps from, from uh, coaches and, and uh, parents. Some of it comes though from the athlete themselves and uh, through a, you know, a burning desire to improve um, their training loads become unrealistic and, and therefore they're putting themselves at risk. So in either scenario, overtraining is an issue for, for creating injury. Warming up helps prevent sports injuries, especially for sports requiring high-speed movement. The warm-up should duplicate movements of the sport. Avoid injury by training with the correct type and level of intensity for the sport. Overtraining can cause injuries. 
By eating a balanced diet, the body gets the nutrition needed to help it ward off injury and illness. Maintaining fluid intake while involved in sport is critical. Dehydration can decrease stamina and reduce an athlete's capacity to make judgments, perform skills and movements. And these can all increase the incidence of injury while playing sport. So there's a lot players can do to assist them to avoid sports injuries. Yes, but don't underestimate your role in helping to prevent injury too. <laughs> Me? How can I help them avoid injuries? Oh, a lot. You can encourage players to wear protective equipment when they're playing sport and to always play by the rules, because rules are there to protect players. What else? You have to make sure players know about the risks they face when playing sport and you must ensure that players are well trained. Here, have a look at this. There's a lot of ways in which a coach will impact on the, uh, the injury profile of his or her team. Um, they may uh, underestimate um, you know, or, or overestimate perhaps the, the ability of their squad to cope with a level of training and pitch the level of training uh, too high. The, the level of the training may be appropriate but they simply do too much of it. So the coach needs, I feel, some sympathy towards coaches who these days are expected to be experts in all things, both technically in their sport and also trying to manage the, uh, the training loads of, of their teams. You know, they are a, a critical part of the injury prevention of a, of a, of a team and hopefully the uh, health professionals who work with sporting teams also have good relationships with their coaches and can uh, coordinate that well together. Two key elements to preventing sports injuries are wearing appropriate protective equipment and maintaining the condition of playing surfaces. Protective equipment is a, is a very important part of, of some sports, not so critical in others. Um, mouth guards in football, um, I can't think of a, a, a reason why you wouldn't choose not to have one. In some sports it isn't an issue because it's... it's uh, you know, it isn't given as an option, perhaps. You know, if you're going to be involved in a cycling event, you'll wear a helmet because that is the, uh, the consensus and the norm for that sport. It's in sports, perhaps, where the kids get a choice of whether they would like to wear something or not wear something where it becomes a bit more grey. But uh, I think another important thing about protective equipment, regardless of the sport that you play, is that it's, it's comfortable and it's, uh, you know, it's doing the job that it's, that it's uh, meant to do. Um, if the sporting equ equipment is not comfortable, then obviously... Athletes will be reticent to use them and um, they should be of a good quality and, and well fitting so that um, they're, you know, they're providing the protection that they're designed to do. I think it's well documented that if a surface is uneven or inconsistent um, that uh, can cause the athlete to have uncertainty as to how the surface is going to respond beneath them. Playing surface, uh, it's, it's consistency and it's... Um, uh, its quality is you know, it's very important for athletes. A suitable diet can help prevent injury. During activity, fluid intake prevents dehydration. Quality of coaching impacts on potential for injury. Protective equipment should be worn if needed. It should be comfortable to wear. A poor quality playing surface can also increase the risk of injuries. Minor sports injuries include small bruises and cuts, stitches, cramps, slight muscle strains, minor blisters and general soreness. Major injuries include concussion, soft tissue injuries like cartilage damage, ligament sprains and muscle and tendon tears. Also, dislocations, fractures, loss of consciousness, spinal injuries even heart attacks and strokes can be suffered while playing sport. I don't think there's a, pri uh, a precise definition for severe and not so severe. Um, I know that in sports medicine we use a, a common uh, rating system for a lot of soft tissue injuries, grade 1, 2 and 3, um, which is helpful. But we need to, I think, recognise that all injuries are a continuum between no injury and obviously uh, the, the far more severe ones. Broadly speaking, there are two main causes of sports injuries, external violence and internal violence. Uh, 
Internal violence uh, refers to an injury that uh, involves you know, a breakdown of a tissue in the body, so there hasn't been necessarily an external force applied. External violence, uh, we associate of course with our collision sports, where there's a collision and it results in damage to a muscle and internal bleeding, uh, or a broken bone, you know, by, again by a collision. There are three main categories of internal violence injuries. These are acute injuries, chronic injuries and overuse injuries. Acute injuries refer to injuries that occur um, with a rapid onset and usually from a single incident. That's what we refer to as acute injuries. So if one has had no prior recent history of, for example, a muscle tear in the thigh and then you try to run fast and there's a breakdown of that muscle as you're running, um, that's ref referred to as an acute injury. A chronic injury, on the other hand, refers to an injury which lasts over a long period of time, uh, may not necessarily respond to rest, and usually is not necessarily from a, a single acute episode. Overuse, on the other hand, is an injury which has developed over a period of time from repeated stress and repeated trauma. So there's not necessarily been one specific incident, but a whole series of, of incidents or prolonged stress to a part which causes it to break down. Asthma is a respiratory condition caused by excess mucus in the airways. Asthma can be induced by exercise and asthmatics need to take extreme care when involved in playing sport. Delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS, is muscle discomfort which often occurs after activity. Delayed onset muscle soreness is the soreness that you have when you do um, an inappropriate um, level of exercise that your body's not accustomed to. If I went to the gymnasium and, and I did uh, five sets of ten heavy bench press tomorrow or any other exercise for that matter, I would wake up the next day with significant muscle tightness and soreness. And there hasn't necessarily been uh, a great deal of trauma within the muscle on a, on a large scale, but microscopically there has been some trauma and that causes soreness that is delayed in onset. At the time of doing the exercise, the athlete's doing it with reasonable comfort but the second and third day afterwards can be very painful. Sports injuries can be major or minor. Injuries can be caused by external violence where a collision takes place, or by internal violence where no collision takes place. Delayed onset muscle soreness is where the muscles experience soreness a day or two after the activity rather than during it. So who's this Dr ABC person then? Dr ABC? Acronyms, remember? It's the very first thing you should check, especially if the injured person is unconscious. So what does it mean? Here, look at this. In any first aid situation, remember Dr ABC. D for danger, R for response, A for airway, B for breathing and C for circulation. Dr ABC is a very helpful uh, tool for people involved in sports medicine to help them uh, approach a, f a first aid situation in an appropriate way. And uh, the D stands for danger. So that means that before one approaches a, an injury, an injured player, an injury situation, one considers, first of all, safety to themselves. Uh, in terms of exp uh, exposure to blood or exposure to uh, a footballer who has uh, you know, lost some control and who might hurt them, uh, those sorts of things need to be considered first. Hey Jane, you alright? Response Jane. can be done by talking to the person, by um, trying to elicit some response to a stimulus such as a touch of the hand or a tap on the sh shoulder or the face or something like that. Uh, a of course stands for airway and that uh, you know, is the first of the more, the more critical parts of your initial assessment or your, your primary screening of an injured person to make sure that there is nothing uh, occluding uh, the airway and preventing the person from breathing. So without going into the details of how that's done, um, one quickly makes sure that there's not um, a mouth guard or dentures or the tongue uh, blocking the airway and preventing that person from having a normal ventilation. 
Um, breathing is, is assessed using all of the senses. You look, listen and feel to see whether the athlete is, uh, is breathing. And not only whether they're breathing, but also the quality of the breathing. One tries to make a quick analysis of whether the athlete's breathing freely or, or they're laboured um, or there's you know, some blockage to their airways. And the last of the uh, Dr ABC is circulation. And uh, usually in the sporting sense, one can... Uh, uh, visually see any, any blood or open wounds um, and, and one can get a, a quick impression of the overall circulation status of the patient by, just, or, uh, by looking at the colour of their skin. For immediate assessment of an injury, remember Dr ABC. Danger, response, airway, breathing and circulation. Now, there was another one you mentioned, something to do with TAPS? Saltaps, S-A-L-T-A-P-S, and it's got nothing to do with TAPS. <sighs> Go on, lay it on me. Dr ABC is your initial primary screen, if you want to call it that, and then your secondary screening or secondary assessment as a first aider is done using a Saltaps type approach. The first of them is to stop and take a breath and just assess uh, your own safety and the safety of the, uh, the athlete and just the situation in general so you're sort of calm to make good decisions. Um, ask is the second uh, letter in Soltaps and simply means one asks the athlete what happened. You all right? Yeah. What happened? One asks perhaps bystanders or parents if it's necessary so you can get a good clear picture as to what's going on. L stands for look. Um, you're encouraged to... Uh, to again take your time and look for uh, anything that might be relevant to your information about the injury. So one looks for uh, bleeding, bruising, um, scratches on the skin in a contact sport. Uh, T stands for touch. T is uh, touching, obviously, gives, again, gives you some valuable information. If one has a, uh, a sharp pain response from touching an injured area, that's a, a good indication that something's gone on. You move your um, active movement, similarly, you encourage an injured person to move the injured part and ask them quite simply, can they, can they move it? And if they can, once again, that may give you an indication of the degree or the severity of the injury. A passive movement, on the other hand, is done by the first aider or by the therapist. So having asked the athlete, can they move, then one does tries to do it for them. And again, that gives you further information about whether you might be dealing with a soft tissue injury or a fracture or something more sinister. The last letter of Soltaps refers to stand up, and that simply means that having done a, a screening of the athlete in terms of can they, uh, can they move and, and, and can you move the part and so forth, uh, your assessment might be that uh, all of those things are reasonable and you'll attempt to stand them up and see how they go. If, if an, an injured athlete can't move the body part themselves, one has to be careful not to conclude from that that, uh, that the injury is necessarily severe. Um, it may be that they're fearful and scared of moving the injured part and, and in fact, the degree of the injury is not so bad. Um, but, of course, it can uh, be to the contrary as well. For further injury assessment, remember Soltaps. Stop, ask, look, touch, active movement, passive movement, stand up. OK, I think I've just about got my mind around all this, but there was one other thing you mentioned. Um, pasta, wasn't it? No, rice. Rices, actually. R-I-C-E-R-S. All right, I'm ready. Injuries to soft tissues also mean injuries to blood vessels, which swell and leak. The more blood collects around an injury, the longer the healing period. The RICES procedure helps to control internal bleeding. You use RICES, R-I-C-E-R-S, um, at the time of an acute injury, an acute joint injury or an acute soft tissue injury when, and that's when you need to apply your sort of initial first aid management. Uh, the R stands for rest, which is obviously designed to reduce further damage. It makes no sense to leave a, a, a significantly injured or damaged player on the sporting field because that is going to increase the severity of the injury. 
Um, ice is used to reduce pain. Ice is also uh, used to help reduce uh, inflammation and, and swelling. So it's, uh, the consensus is that ice is applied with any acute injury involving internal soft tissue injury or bleeding. Um, compression is also used to help prevent um, you know, excessive internal bleeding. It's, um, it's accepted that if uh, there is uncontrolled bleeding and substantial swelling in a soft tissue injury, that then delays uh, the healing. E in RISIS stands for elevation. That, uh, along with compression, is used to help reduce the build-up of uh, fluid swelling in the area of the, of the injury and the internal bleeding. So you elevate the injured part above the level of the heart, and that helps to uh, prevent excessive you know, swelling build-up. R stands for referral, and that means that having made an initial assessment of the injury, uh, you need to refer your, your injured player or athlete onto an appropriate uh, medical personnel, physiotherapist or doctor for an, a further assessment of the problem. And S finally stands for stretch, which means that uh, you can, uh, in the acute management of the problem, put the part on stretch uh, in the case of a soft tissue injury to a muscle. Uh, and that can be done whilst you're icing the injury, but it's probably the least critical part of the overall management. And of course, while you're applying your RISIS procedure, no harm should be done. Of course, if you're injured, you don't want to harm yourself anymore. That's right. And the way to avoid further harm is to make sure there's no harm. Oh, wait a minute. I'm confused. OK. No H-A-R-M. No heat, like spas, saunas, baths or liniment. No alcohol in the first 24 hours no running or exercising the injured part, and no massage. When treating a soft tissue injury, remember RICES. Rest, ice, compression, elevation, referral and stretching. Apply RICES with no harm, that is, no heat, alcohol, running or massage. When an injury first happens, the first stage in aiding healing and recovery is to treat it appropriately. Well, the, the process of healing starts uh, shortly after the very acute phase of the, uh, of the injury and, and you know, the initial trauma, initial damage and internal bleeding. Uh, most soft tissues heal by scarring and that process is reasonably predictable over around about a, a sort of a six week period. If you're comparing that to a hard tissue injury such as bone, the, what sets that apart is that the bone makes new bone. So rather than scarring, it, it makes new bone. And in a non-weight-bearing bone, such as an upper limb injury, an arm injury, uh, that's considered to be around about six weeks. And in a lower limb or weight-bearing bone, it's considered to be around about 10 to 12 weeks. During rehabilitation, further treatment is likely to be needed, which should be carried out by a physiotherapist. So does the club have a physiotherapist that can help with rehabilitation? Oh yeah, Dr KC. Oh, more acronyms? No, Dr KC. Oh. Sports physiotherapists use a very wide range of uh, uh, techniques for the treatment of sports injuries. We might use uh, spinal mobilisation, manipulation, stretching techniques. Uh, for the treatment of the spine. We might also help an athlete with posture correction um, and uh, become involved in the analysis you know, from a biomechanical standpoint of their throwing technique or their running technique and that type of thing. Um, for soft tissue injuries, we would uh, use, again, a, a wide variety of techniques, including some electrotherapy, some massage, some stretching, uh, conditioning exercises. And... Um, and uh, for more complex injuries, we might also need to completely rehabilitate sort of movement patterns and sporting skills and help the athlete to, to regain some uh, personal confidence in their ability to, to perform their sport once again. So sports physiotherapists use a very wide range of tools and we also call upon the expertise of a lot of other health practitioners where necessary to help the rehabilitation of a, uh, of a sports person. Stretching and flexibility are both very important for injury rehabilitation. We use stretching techniques a lot to restore the movement to stiff joints after injury and of course we also use them to restore the normal uh, length of a muscle after uh, soft tissue repair. 
Flexibility, on the other hand, I think is equally important for injury prevention as it is for sports performance. And with the repeated trauma of uh, training and competition, a lot of athletes find that their flexibility deteriorates. So whilst I wouldn't choose to excessively stretch uh, a stiff or relatively stiff athlete um, uh, you know, as a matter of course, I would certainly use uh, flexibility um, stretching techniques and some other mo modalities such as yoga and pilates to help an athlete maintain sufficient flexibility for them to, to have you know, good performance in their sport. Muscle endurance is, is important when one considers the sport that you're rehabilitating someone to, one needs to consider the type of muscle contractions that they'll be performing in their sport. So the rehabilitation needs to mimic, uh, at least in the latter stages, it needs to mimic those sporting skills. Proprioception is a, a word that refers to your joint position sense. So it's, it's your ability to maintain a uh, good balanced body position when you're bearing weight through your legs. We often think of it in terms of single leg weight bearing or what your balance is like on one leg. Healing occurs in different ways. For example, soft tissue injuries heal by scarring, but bones heal by growing new tissue. Different injuries take different lengths of time to heal. Ligaments, and particularly tendons, are slow, while bones are quicker by comparison. A variety of rehabilitation techniques are used by physiotherapists and other medical professionals. Sports injuries. They will always happen, and they must always be taken seriously. By following the right procedures when an injury occurs, applying the right treatment and undergoing proper rehabilitation, athletes have the best possible chance of returning to play their sport of choice. Music